and girls, and welcome to another episode of King's Comics. I'm Andy King, and today we're here to talk about Spider-Gwen, Ghost Spider, number one. It's taken me a second to pick this comic up, but I managed to finally grab it. In fact, the first issue sold out so quickly, I had to get a second printing. More on how that works later. Either way, as some of you might recall, Spider-Gwen as a character was introduced in the Edge of the Spider-Verse storyline back when Into the Spider-Verse came out, or rather Spider-Verse came out, as a comic event. Then she became even more popular with the Into the Spider-Verse movie, which I was in love with if you've seen my reviews on the movie or any spoilers that I've given away about the movie. I I'm just in love with it. Moving on. Spider-Gwen recently re-released as a number one, starting in 2018 with Spider-Gwen Ghost Spider. She was typically referred to as Spider-Woman in her universe, which is Earth-65, I think, in the Marvel Multiverse, where Earth-616 is the mainline multiverse, and Earth-1610 is the ultimate universe. But that gets confusing with respect to the fact that there already is a Spider-Woman, Jessica Drew. So, in order to avoid further confusion, they gave Spider-Gwen a new alias as Ghost Spider. Now, how does this all play into the comic as well as why it was relaunching? The original creative team, consisting of Jason Latour and Robbie Rodriguez, actually took a departure from the series. That's right, after several trades and multiple volumes, they finally finished up their run and led into this new series which is actually a tie-in to the ongoing, or I think recently concluded, Spider-Geddon event. Now, that actually is one of my problems with the comic, or at least this single issue, but more on that later. The new creative team stepping in is consisting of writer Seanan McGuire, who is actually a novelist. I believe after researching her career, this is her first comic. I've actually linked her bibliography down below, and she's also a musician on in the filk genre, which I think is nerd folk pretty much. It sounds pretty cool, but it seems like it has a lot to do with sci-fi and fantasy and uh, I guess just general fan-based fiction all around. It sounds interesting. I've never listened to it or explored it, but it might be something I have to get into. But all that to say, this appears to be McGuire's first actual comic or graphic novel endeavor, as far as I can tell. The creative team consists not only of Shining McGuire as a writer, but also Rosie Campe as artist. Rosie is, as far as I know, kind of up and coming in the graphic novel world as an illustrator, having illustrated works such as Cartel for Image Comics and even Civil War II Choosing Sides for Marvel. This is, I think, her first big contiguous series that's coming out, well, under a major publisher. Campe is actually publishing her own ongoing webcomic called Unknown Lands. It's a mature comic, so uh, 18 plus and only. For our younger viewers here, please ask your parents first. I am not responsible for anything you do or don't read, but that's all I can say. Viewer discretion advised, etc, etc. Let's move on to this review. Now, I am a fan of Spider-Gwen as a character. I was first in line, so to speak, for the Edge of Spider-Verse event, and I pulled all five of the original Edge of Spider-Verse comics. So I have a first printing of the original Spider-Gwen comic, which some of you may have seen on my comic wall back when I was starting out this channel. So I really like the character. I really just like this alternate, well, honestly, I just like, like any alternate takes on traditional characters and just how multiverses can play into Marvel and DC comics. However, with this one, it felt a little bit rushed and forced, and I really hate to say that because I like Spider-Gwen and I like what the creative team was trying to do. Campe's art was very fitting for the narrative as well as the character in and of herself, but at the same time, this wasn't explored as much as I would have liked, considering that this issue led right into the Spider-Geddon event. I don't think it's a good idea for a comic to, or a comic series to start off immediately tying into a comic event that kind of makes a messy storyline and honestly upsets a lot of the creative freedoms and liberties that, uh, that creative teams have for their works. But that's just things from the art perspective. What about from the writing perspective? Honestly, I'm a fan of McGuire's work here. I think she did a great job of capturing a slight sense of, I don't know if I want to call it grief, but almost regret or adjustment back into society. For those who finished reading the Spider-Gwen comic series by Latour and Rodriguez, spoiler alerts inbound, 
Spider Gwen, Gwen Stacy, ended up going to jail. She turned herself in after all of the events of the series, with her having adopted the Venom symbiote and committed violent crimes, with her being somewhat culpable in Peter Parker's death and a whole series of other crimes that were unfortunately attributed to her status as Spider Woman or Spider Gwen, whichever you choose to call her. That being said, that leads directly into this series, where one year later, after she gets out of a S.H.I.E.L.D. Supermax prison, she's trying to reorient herself back into society, meeting with Harry Osborn to catch a meal, as well as figure out what her next steps are. This also means that her identity is publicly known as Spider-Gwen. Gwen Stacy and Spider-Gwen are the same person, and everybody knows it. This is also an interesting take on the character that I really enjoy, the idea of her secret identity being ousted and people just knowing and being able to walk up to her and say hi or oh hey I love the work you do or the fact that she can scare off criminals just with her presence. It's very it's a very interesting dynamic and I love that the writers and creative teams are now starting to use differences such as these to differentiate these characters from the traditional Peter Parker origin story. But I digress. It was a great comic. I enjoyed it. But I really think that it's going to take a lot more to sell me on this as a series. I'm going to go ahead and trade weight on this one, wait for Volume 1 to come out, and then post my review then. Because I really want to see where this creative team goes and maybe what is possible once they are flying solo away from this Spider-Geddon event. Maybe we'll get a more, a, a deeper analysis, a deeper cut of this character, and then we can go from there. But that's all I have for today, folks. I recommend you pick this comic up, as always, and make your own opinion. But maybe there's something I missed. Maybe there's something I can go a little bit more in-depth about or some opinions I didn't explore here. If that's the case, please drop a line down below with comments, feedback, suggestions. I'd love to hear what you have to say, as always. And if you like today's video or you want to see more content like this, please hit that like button or subscribe button. I'd really love to see that, too. But if you really, really liked it, heck, Share it to Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. I'm big on Instagram. Heck, if you want to slide in my DMs, ask me about comics or suggestions, or talk about the great mysteries of life, and <clears throat> yeah, I mean, if you want to hit me up on Instagram or anything like that, please feel free. That being said, I'll cut it short right there. Thanks y'all for tuning in for another episode of King's Comics, and I will see you again soon.